Welcome to the podcast. My name is Dr. Noor Gajraj. Let's talk about the epigenetic clock, a new frontier in disease risk prediction. So what exactly is an epigenetic clock? The term refers to DNA methylation algorithms that are trained to predict either chronological age, health span or lifespan. DNA methylation is a fundamental epigenetic mark, a chemical tag on our DNA that can turn genes on or off without changing the underlying genetic code. The pattern of these tags changes predictably as we age. Epigenetic clocks analyze the methylation status of specific sites across our genome to generate a single number or age that can be compared to our actual chronological age. The three generations of epigenetic clocks. First generation clocks. These were the original clocks developed by comparing DNA methylation data from people of different ages. They were trained specifically to predict chronological age, e.g. the Horvath and Hanum clocks. Second generation clocks. They were trained to predict complex outcomes like mortality risk and health related phenotypes. For example, Grim Age and Pheno Age. Third generation clocks. The latest generation focuses on an even more sophisticated outcome, the pace of aging. For example, Dunedin Pace, which models the rate of multi organ system deterioration. These clocks are designed to predict more complex outcomes, giving them potentially greater utility for clinical predictions. The research question, a large scale comparison. While many smaller studies have reported links between epigenetic clocks and various diseases, no large scale systematic comparison has been conducted to date. The study we're reviewing was the first to address this, providing an unbiased assessment of 14 leading clocks in a single large cohort of nearly 19,000 individuals. The goal was to see which clocks, if any, could predict the 10 year onset of a comprehensive set of 174 disease outcomes. Second generation clocks lead the way. The first key finding was clear. Second and third generation clocks significantly outperformed first generation clocks. First generation clocks which are only trained to predict chronological age, had much smaller effect sizes and limited application in disease settings. This suggests that while they are accurate at predicting age, they lack the added biological information needed to predict disease risk effectively. The most significant association with all cause mortality was found with grim age. Key finding number two, strongest links to specific diseases. The study identified 176 significant associations between 13 of the clocks and 57 unique diseases. Importantly, in 27 of these diseases, the hazard ratio for the clock was even greater than its association with all cause mortality highlighting specific powerful links. There was a particularly strong focus on respiratory and liver based conditions, including primary lung cancer and cirrhosis, metabolic diseases, including diabetes. Other notable associations included Crohn's disease and delirium. Key finding number three, improving clinical risk prediction. Beyond just showing associations, the study investigated whether adding a clock to a clinical prediction model with traditional risk factors, such as age, sex, smoking, and BMI, actually improved its accuracy. The answer was a resounding yes. There were 35 instances where adding a clock increased the classification accuracy by over 1%. And in these cases, the overall model's predictive power was clinically meaningful. 
For example, PhenoAge improved the classification of Parkinson's disease and Dunedin Pace improved the classification of ischemic stroke. The nuance, why do clocks work differently? The reason for this predictive power is in the clock's design. Second and third generation clocks are not just trained on age. They incorporate proxies for broader health information. For instance, Grim Age includes a DNA methylation surrogate for smoking, which helps to drive its strong associations with respiratory diseases. Dunedin Pace includes longitudinal changes in BMI, weight hip ratio and HbA1c, which directly contributes to its predictive utility for diabetes. This highlights a trade-off. These clocks are more powerful for disease prediction, but may be more complex to interpret than a single, simple age readout. Conclusion and future directions. In conclusion, this large-scale unbiased study provides compelling evidence that second and third generation epigenetic clocks are powerful biomarkers for disease risk prediction. Their strong links to respiratory and liver conditions are particularly notable. While they are not yet a clinical tool, these results form a starting point for the targeted selection of clocks for use in future clinical risk prediction models. The ultimate goal is to transform this biological insight into actionable information that helps all live healthier and longer. Thank you for listening. Please consider buying my book, 100 Pathways to Longevity, and subscribing to this channel. Thank you.